Booker T. Washington was an African-American educator in rural Alabama who established Tuskegee Institute, now known as Tuskegee University. Julius Rosenwald was a wealthy man of Jewish ancestry from Springfield, Illinois, who amassed great wealth as the head of Sears Roebuck and Company. These two unlikely allies worked together to establish schools that served black children across the South during a time when the South's public educational system worked against such a goal. This is a brief history of Rosenwald schools in Lauderdale County. Included with this history is background on African-American schools in general in Lauderdale County prior to the Rosenwald program. This image from the Florence Journal published the results of the number of school-aged children in Lauderdale County in 1869. The number of white children, male and female, totaled 4,430. The number of black children, male and female, totaled 2,373. In 1870, the general population had more than 6,000 African Americans living in Lauderdale County. In Florence, there were more than 1,000 African Americans. Most were formerly enslaved people. Just more than 40 had been free people of color before the war. Two years after the Civil War, a leading newspaper editor called for the education of formerly enslaved people. David Lindsay, a local educator as well as the editor of the Florence Journal, wrote in 1867 that with the abolishment of slavery, he and other progressive white residents recognized that education was the means to, quote, make our former servants in their present status recognize their relationship to society at large. Among the first schools was the Freedmen's Public School, which was established in 1866 at the Methodist Church at Church Springs. It was located at the corner of Court and Bluff Streets in Florence. Noted educator, Professor Oscar Waring was principal. The school included a department to train future teachers. Though the school is gone, the church is now known as St. Paul AME Church. It is believed that this school evolved into the Florence District School for Negroes. By 1880, its principal was the eccentric Fisk University graduate, Professor Young A. Wallace, shown in this image. One of its more famous alumni was renowned blues composer and musician, W.C. Handy. Earlier attempts to educate local freedmen included a school run by George Poole. The location of this school is unknown at this time, but it was described in this newspaper article as a, quote, flourishing colored school. It is believed that George Poole, who was a former boot black at Florence Wesleyan University, picked up basic education through his exposure to those who attended the college and who sought out his boot black skills. He opened a school for freedmen in 1865. By May 1866, E.M. Mears and his wife were teaching at a freedman's school in Florence, but all was not well at other schools, according to their monthly report to the Freedmen's Bureau in Huntsville. In the report, shown here, they noted two practically illiterate freedmen who were attempting to teach in unsupervised schools in the county. They also reported there were several even less qualified teachers who were preparing to start schools. Their report was addressed to Union Colonel John B. Callas, who was the assistant commissioner of the Huntsville's Freedmen's Bureau. The need for more schools fueled openings for the next several years. Carpenter High School was founded in 1876 by the American Missionary Society, conducted under First Congregational Church. Pastors of the church served as the school's principals until the 1890s. The location of First Congregational Church is the present-day site 
of Tennessee Valley Community Church on Pine Street in Florence. In May 1900, John F. Slater School, named after the philanthropist and education advocate, opened on South Court Street. In 1903, the American Missionary Association founded Burrell Normal School in Florence. It was on the corner of Poole and Circular Roads, now known as West College Street. The school was originally founded in Selma as Burrell Academy and named for Jabez Burrell of Oberlin, Ohio, who in 1868 donated $10,000 to the AMA. In 1937, the Florence Board of Education took over the administration of Burrell and made it a high school. In 1951, the high school students from Burrell were transferred to Slater, which then became known as Burrell Slater High School. In Lauderdale County, there were three fractional townships and 24 whole townships. Each whole township had 36 sections within it, measuring six miles on a side and comprised of 640 acres. The goal at the time was that each of these townships would have one or more public schools. By 1870, state law allowed for a superintendent in each county. The state superintendent appointed two directors. Each April, three trustees for each township were elected. Trustees could establish schools, hire teachers, and set their salaries. Trustees could also buy, sell, or lease school property and conduct a school census. This image of an article in the Lauderdale Times shows the amount appropriated to each township for its schools. By February of 1872, there were funds set aside for white county schools in all 24 of the major townships of Lauderdale County. The townships of Mitchells in northeast Lauderdale, Lexington, Waterloo, and Haddock in the extreme northwest had no county schools for black students. Apparently, there weren't enough black students in these townships at the time to warrant schools. By the 1870s, the law stipulated that there could be no more than three black or white schools in any given township. Schools were required to have an average of 20 students and continue in operation for five months. A poll tax was levied on all men between the ages of 21 and 45. The monies raised through the poll tax were used to fund public schools. This image from the Florence Gazette clearly shows the use of funds raised through the poll tax was divided by race. Other funds for public schools came from general appropriations, a mill tax, and funds set aside for such use by each township. The poll tax continued in Alabama until 1964. This image of an item in the March 13, 1880 Florence Gazette exemplifies the desire among black residents to become educated. Jake Thomas was a teacher at a school for black students located on a farm owned by Peter Broadfoot, who was white. The property was near Oakland in West Lauderdale County. Mariah Coger, a widowed mother and sharecropper, was 60 years old, but didn't let her age stop her from attending the school. Mrs. Coger said she wanted to learn enough to read her Bible. An 1882 Florence Gazette article reported that Lauderdale County had 61 schools for white students and 19 schools for African-American students. The other image is an article that compares school census totals from 1885 and 1887. There were 1,956 black students in 1885. Two years later, that number had increased to 1,977. 
By 1889, there were 10 black teachers in Lauderdale County, compared to the 41 white teachers. This image from an item published in August of that year shows the yearly salaries of each teacher. The highest salary, $100, was paid to J.W. Turnley, Young A. Wallace, and A.P. Mosley. Mr. Wallace had 73 students in his school compared to just more than 40 students in Mr. Turnley and Mr. Mosley's schools. The lowest salary in this report was $54 paid to Peter Ingram, who had 16 students. A 1907 map listed the 30 school districts across Lauderdale County. According to a Florence Times report of November of that year, there were 75 white schools and 15 African-American schools. This is a list of the schools in Lauderdale County by March 1922. There were 19 African-American schools. Seven were state schools. Their locations are shown on this map. At least seven of these schools were Rosenwald schools. The Rosenwald school program began in 1912 between Julius Rosenwald and Booker T. Washington. Rosenwald was a Chicago philanthropist who amassed his wealth as a partner and later CEO of Sears Roebuck and Company. Washington was principal of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, now known as Tuskegee University. Rosenwald was an admirer of Washington and was a member of the Tuskegee Institute Board of Trustees. He persuaded other wealthy white philanthropists to join him in setting up a fund that would provide grants to communities that were building schools for black students. Rosenwald, like Washington, regarded education as the key to African-American progress. The first of these schools was built in Lee County in 1913. Local black residents had to contribute cash and in-kind donations of material to match a Rosenwald grant. A local school board was required to generate public support, take ownership of the new property, and commit to its maintenance and upkeep as part of its public school system. The school structures had to follow one of several pre-established plans initially developed by architecture professors at Tuskegee Institute. Standard elements in these plans were wood frame or brick structures with large east or west facing windows to provide ample light in schools that did not have electricity. Most of the schools built in the early days of the program were small one or two teacher schools. Plans were later upgraded for structures that could support up to 11 teachers. The Rosenwald Fund's early operations were controlled by a small staff based in Chicago. It was initially headed by Francis W. Shepherdson. At Tuskegee, a committee of executive officers included Booker T. Washington's wife, Margaret Murray Washington. She coordinated the applications and grants for individual schools. In 1920, the Rosenwald Building Program was revamped and relocated from Tuskegee to Nashville. The fund required that schools meet minimum standards, such as the size and length of the school term, and that each school have new furniture and equipment, as well as two sanitary privies. Grants could range from $500 for a one-teacher building up to $2,100 for a school building with 10 or more teachers. The fund later offered grants of $200 per classroom for additions to existing Rosenwald schools. In 1928, Julius Rosenwald reorganized the fund. He scaled back the building program and shifted the fund into a broader array of projects in rural and higher education, medicine, and race relations. The Rosenwald School building program ended in 1932 with Rosenwald's death. One final school was constructed at Warm Springs, Georgia in 1937 at the urging of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. 
The Southern office closed in 1937. By July 1st of that year, there were 5,357 Rosenwald schools across the South. By 1922, Lauderdale County had seven known Rosenwald schools, as seen in this slide. There is much we don't know about these schools. What follows is what we can glean from period newspapers and other records, as well as the recollection of one former student. The earliest known Rosenwald School in Lauderdale County is Bethel, near Smithsonian, in a location that was known as the Bend of the River. On May 17, 1917, the Florence Times reported on the building of the schoolhouse at a cost of about $2,000. Black residents were to raise one-third of that total, the state was to provide one-third, and the Rosenwald Fund would provide the other third. Little is known of Bethel School. It closed sometime after 1959. The Coffee Rosenwald School was a two-teacher school that was built in 1917. It was located south of Three Forks, a few miles west of Florence. It closed by February 1957 and the property was sold. According to information in a dissertation written in 1985 by Sandra Sockwell, the coffee students, as well as students at the Shiloh Rosenwald School, were moved to the nearby Ray School in 1949. According to Sockwell's dissertation, titled The Place Names of Colbert and Lauderdale Counties, Alabama, land for the Anderson Rosenwald School was deeded to the state in 1923. It was located in McGee Town on Savannah Highway in the southwest corner of the farm of Lucian Anderson near the Walker Hill and Bailey's Temple African American Public Schools. According to Sockwell, students at Anderson were transferred to West End High School in 1958 because of the deteriorated condition of the building at Anderson. According to Fisk University's Rosenwald database, Anderson was a one-teacher school built at a cost of $1,550. Black residents in the community raised $700. The general public raised $450, and Rosenwald's Fund granted $400. According to a deed filed on December 3, 1920, Abraham H. Hewitt Sr. and his wife, Henrietta, the previous year, sold two acres to the state for $5. The land was located a few miles east of St. Florian and south of Bailey Springs in County School District No. 18. It was the site of the Hewitt Rosenwald School. Abraham Hewitt, who was an African American, was a farmer from the St. Florian Bailey Springs area. He was born in 1851 and died in 1948. He and his wife, Henrietta Huff, had several children and grandchildren and eventually moved to Los Angeles to live with their daughter and son-in-law, Effie and Ben Fields. According to Fisk University's Rosenwald Fund card file database, Hewitt School was a one-teacher school built at a cost of $1,000. Half of that amount came from the Rosenwald Fund. The other half was raised by local families, including Civil War veteran Anthony Brannan, an African American. The school served grades one through six and closed due to integration sometime after 1964, at which time the state sold the school property. As of now, the only known teachers of this school are Lucille Acklin in 1942 and Mrs. Susie Buckingham in 1964. The Hewitt School probably seceded an earlier school taught at the Bailey Springs African Methodist Episcopal Church. This photo shows members of the Brannan and Brown families at Hewitt School on Easter Sunday, 1950. Mount Olive, sometimes called Mount Olivet, 
on O. Lee Highway near First Creek was one and a half miles from Rogersville in East Lauderdale County. According to the Fisk University Rosenwald database, it was built at a cost of $1,500 as a two-teacher school. S.S. Posey was principal in 1924 and O.L. Fields assistant principal. No other teachers or faculty are known at this time. In a letter to editor Marcy B. Darnall of the Florence Herald, Posey and Fields thanked Darnall for the school's weekly copy of the Herald, which they noted was especially important in the school's civics class. The two men also noted that Mount Olive had just organized a school club. The Mount Olive school property was sold by the County Board of Education in January 1949. The Mount Zion School is noted on this 1922 map. It was located on County Road 189, just south of Rhodesville in the Bend of the River area of West Lauderdale County. It was a wooden frame building on brick pillars. It had two teachers and was built for $1,500. The school closed during integration in 1968. It was situated just across the road from Mount Zion AME Church, which to this day is still an active congregation. The pillars of the old school still exist. Anita Smith Cobb's mother, Hattie Pride Smith, a former Mount Zion student, began teaching grades one through three at Mount Zion in 1939. Anita was five years old at this time. Mrs. Smith taught at the school for approximately six years until 1945. Mrs. Cobb said her mother allowed her to accompany her to school. However, Anita was required to be quiet and listen while her mother was teaching. It was an early education for the young girl who, as an adult, said she can't remember not knowing how to read or how to do arithmetic. She said she also accompanied her mother if her mother taught summer school. Mount Zion had the typical Rosenwald two-teacher design with two classrooms separated by a movable partition. This image shows some of the teachers at Mount Zion School. Anita's mother taught grades one through three in one room. Grades four through six were taught by another teacher in the other room. One room had a stage. Bathrooms were located in outdoor privies, male and female, just west of the school building. School days began with a program in which students were led in songs, a reading of scripture, a prayer, and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. But before classes began, and as long as supplies last, breakfast was served to the students. It was cooked in the school's industrial room, which also doubled as a kitchen, and usually consisted of grits and biscuits, or strickaline, which Mrs. Cobb described as bacon with the rind on it with the outside skin. Students either brought their lunches or ate lunch cooked by the older girls in the kitchen, such as brown beans or a stew. The children were grouped according to their ability and how many years of school they'd had. While one group was being instructed by the teacher, the others were studying and working on assignments. They had an hour's recess where students got exercise by running and playing, but Mrs. Cobb recalled those students whose homes were on farms got plenty of exercise, not only by walking to and from school, but by having to pick or chop cotton after they got home from school. The Florence Herald published the names of students who made honor roll. Shiloh Rosenwald School was a one-room building on Gunwilfoot Road, just west of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in West Lauderdale County in the Woodland area. It succeeded the earlier Jerusalem School, which closed in 1919. It cost $1,800 to construct. 
African-American residents in the community raised $1,150 of this total. The Lauderdale County Board of Education sold the property in 1957. In March 1966, the Lauderdale County Board of Education adopted the federal government's desegregation plan. Florence City Schools did not adopt integration guidelines until 1968. One Rosenwald school, Mount Olive, was closed by 1950. Anderson, Bethel, and Coffee were closed by 1959. Shiloh's property was sold in 1957, yet may have continued until 1963. Hewitt closed in 1964. Only Mount Zion was directly affected by desegregation and was closed in 1968.